Hello and welcome to The Widow's Will. This is part two of a video where I discuss certain um, authors and teachers that belong to the so-called historic Jesus movement. And I want to warn um, believers who seek the truth about these men. Now, the historical Jesus movement um, is not a new movement. It's quite an old movement, but it's a movement where they had the so-called quest for the historic Jesus, the, the man Jesus. And there were many teachers and authors and books and studies, and um, you can get a lot of it on YouTube. And it's also linked to the Dead Sea Scrolls. So in my previous video, I showed you how James Tabor is actually a Noahide. And although this may be known by many, it's not generally known by Christians who seek truth from these men. Um, if you've perhaps um, in your church not had your questions answered, you've seen what's going on in the church and you leave the church and you start on this quest to, to figure out what is going on, you will come across these teachers. Now, I'm not saying not to investigate all things. You won't have a strong faith if you do not test the spirits and if you just believe whatever is told to you. So I do not want to create fear, but I do want to say that what I found later on, um, only later on, is that these uh, are part of a movement to actually to actually um, channel Christians out of the Christian church and into different um, disciplines or different ways of thinking. And I will illustrate to you. For example, I've illustrated to you now regarding James Tabor, who is a Noahide. So what generally could happen is you could read of James, James Tabor's books um, and then... Some people actually may start to follow his blog and you could end up starting to believe the teachings of this man. So he has his surface level teaching where he, for example, discusses certain things regarding Jesus, regarding archaeology. Now, these things can be helpful to you. But what I'm saying is underneath it, there is according to me and my opinion, a agenda. A agenda to chase the sheep into different camps, of which one is this Noah Hyde path. Now, I can't prove any of this. I don't even want to prove it because as your sister, I'm just merely giving you a warning um, to be aware of this in case you are not aware of it. And what they also do often, many authors, many false teachers, is they will teach you the truth, but then they add in a little bit of something that shouldn't be there. A little bit of poison here and there, a little bit of error, a little bit of things that you should actually not really be allowing in your spiritual temple. For example, on UFOs and things like that. And if you are so inclined, you may follow that rabbit hole. And that is how they get you. You see, as if you if you take that bait. So they're giving you truth and they're giving you error. And it's via the error that you go down the rabbit hole. And then you can be channeled into the direction, for example, atheism, becoming a Noahide, or going into messianic judaism or hebrew roots or whatever the case is so i don't want to spend too much time on that i've already shown you with james Tabor in detail in the first video that you know you get that type of thing where on the surface it seems that they're neutral and academic but there really is a hidden agenda beneath the surface and i just want to make you aware of it because if you are aware of it and if you hear the spirit of the Lord, then it's going to be a warning for you. And um, you you may have picked up on these things. It could be a confirmation of, of what you pick up and just a warning so you do not fall in a trap.
Another very well-known one is Bart Ehrman. Now, I'm not going to go into what they teach and what their books are. You can look it up yourself if you want to. I just want to show you, for example, Bart Ehrman. You know, he writes books called like Armageddon, Heaven and Hell, The Triumph of Christianity, Jesus Before the Gospels, things like that. They seem like good books that can help you. The other Gospels, did Jesus exist? Things like that, you know, and you and if you don't know about the hidden agenda to actually corrupt and empty the church, which we can really do nothing about because it's already happening, but um, you know, for yourself. To protect yourself and your loved ones, we need to know these things. So he's written many books, and some of them really don't look very, you know, harmful. So you might, you know, you might be interested in, in a book, The Triumph of Christianity. It might look like a nice book, and you read that book, and maybe it's, I, I haven't read it, but let's say it's not so bad. But then you like the author and then you can maybe start to go into another book where it's now, you know, starting to be quite Gnostic um, and bringing in things that are far removed from the true doctrine of Christ. But the thing with this Bart Ehrman is he actually, via a webinar, he helps Christians that want to leave the faith. How leaving the faith led to a life of more meaning and purpose. In the Bible, we speak of departing from the faith. In 1 Timothy 4, we see, now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now this latter times, of course, doesn't just refer to 2,000 years later, um, it meant fairly early on it was already happening. But it's those words are still true for us because Christ said his word will never pass away. So that's why I'm warning you, these, these seducing spirits, spirits that want to lead you away from the good doctrine of Christ speaks here in verse 6 of good doctrine, you see? And then it says there, but refuse profane and old wives' fables and, excess, and exercise yourself rather to, unto godliness because all these questionings and things basically lead you away from actually just doing what Christ told us. Everybody is trying to gather all this information and understanding, but we are not doing the things we must do. We are not doing what Christ told us. We are not being what we ought to be. Now, partly that is the time we are in, so I don't want you to feel guilty. I'm just pointing it out. There's nothing really the individuals of us can do except, you know, rather than spend all our times trying to understand all these things, it's more important for us to actually, um, you know, do the things that Christ told us to do. Those are more important than the exact details of every single doctrine. And there's a lot of profane things and fables and things uh, that they bring in about UFOs and all sorts of things. I don't even want to go into it. It actually is just too much. Nowadays, I find really, I find a lot of rest in taking a bird's eye view and not because there's so much knowledge now, there's so much information, there's such an overload um, that it's better to just you know, step back a bit and not look at every little minute detail, but get a bird's eye view. And if you are a new Christian, you need to basically be letting the Lord speak to you through the Bible and being loved by him and starting to live according to the ways which he teaches you. You really don't have to worry about getting every understanding 
spot on because he will teach you step by step and his yoke is easy. It's not about knowledge. But my channel is more for those of you that are in this stage where you actually are making the spiritual warfare against the lies and you want to know um, you you have a lot of the Bible maybe under your belt so that you know the scriptures and um, that these things just help you better to see clearer um, in as much as I see things I don't see everything because I'm also just a fellow disciple so I know there are things that you see better than me but I'm sharing the things that I see because it really comforts me also to share what I have. Um, it makes me feel less lonely in this world because I also see on the internet many brothers and sisters sharing the things the Lord gave them. And a lot of the things they may see is not necessarily what I see or I might not agree with them, but I know that we are hearing from the same spirit. So we may see things slightly different and be at different places we, of understanding, but we can be a comfort to each other. But so be careful. For example, this man is a perfect example of one that will help you leave the faith. If you take heed to the seducing spirit that's connected to this, and the things he teaches, he will lead you into atheism. And he does it via webinars, which is quite shocking, and courses. Can you think that you ever would have a course to help you become an atheist? What a time we live in. And you even have lifetime access. So here's another example of one who on the surface seems to be Christian-like, although you'd probably pick up on his books. You can see there's a lot of Gnosticism and things there, but he actually left the faith. He's not a Christian. He's an atheist. And he helps people to um, leave the Christian faith. Another one is this Robert Eisenman. He specifically is a lot about the Dead Sea Scrolls. The thing he was very well known for is the James, the brother of Jesus. So he focuses a lot on, on that type of thing. Um, but his work also, it's focused on actually turning to Messianic Judaism. Um, it's especially this regarding James. He, he basically says, that the real church was James, not Paul. Now, Paul is very much vilified and said to be, you know, a false prophet and that the real truth was actually that, you know, James was the leader and they were still doing many of the commandments of the Torah. And while that's true, they were only doing that because the old covenant was fading away. So those that were under that still did that, whereas the new covenant was phasing in. Now they conflate that and many authors sort of point to that and say that the real Christianity was Torah-keeping Christianity. And you see, that's the, the trap is first they, you can you can believe in Jesus, but you still keep the Jewish law and what happens to a lot of people is the more you keep the law the more um, it blinds you and the greater the chance that you deny Christ and that you totally turn to Judaism or maybe become a Noahide it's really not good it's it's a question of misunderstanding the covenant of grace um, and the teachings of Paul where he taught us uh, that it's not about the patterns of law keeping and that the law is indeed good, but that the Lord made a way for us um, and that, that we are not saved by doing works. Another very well-known one is this Dr. Michael Heiser, and he has this channel, Fringe Pop, 
And he also, you know, he comes across when he speaks as sort of orthodox in a way, but the topics he discusses are, well, in a sense, shocking, but, you know, things like Planet X and the Anunnaki and things like that. Now, he also made this video on the Noahide laws um, on his channel, and um, you can look it up yourself if you want to, but what I want to point out is he immediately starts, when he discusses the Noahide laws, he immediately starts with warnings against anti-Semitism. Now, that's a warning bell, people. If a teacher starts with warnings against anti-Semitism, you must know that they're a Judaizer and that they are against the pure Christian faith. So that this video um, really you know, showed me that, that this man is not somebody we should be following, that there is a lot of leaven with this man. And if you look at his list of his topics, it's quite horrendous, the things he looks at. For example, crystal skulls, ancient giant skeletons, helicopters in ancient Egypt. Is Bigfoot real? Mary Magdalene and Jesus. It's that topic where they believe that they were married. And then what is Kabbalah and the Zohar? And he treats these topics very, very neutral and actually in a positive sense, I would say. Alice Bailey, aliens in ancient Egypt. So it's all these questionings, all these things what the Bible say, foster all sorts of unfruitful questionings and um, things we actually don't need to discuss. I mean, why must we discuss Elena Blavatsky, who was a theosophist and is into the occult? You see, so all these things draw us away and in a sense, they defile believers, but we are living in such a time of gross defilement. So it may be that, you know, that you need to know what these things are about, but be careful, be careful, especially with this author specifically. I see from his topics, no good, because he's having, you know, a very positive discussion on the Zohar and the Kabbalah, Yet, when he has to answer a question about the Noahide laws, he is he immediately, you know, sort of warns that just don't be an anti-Semite. You know, if you question the Noahide laws, you probably, you, you know, it's anti-Semitic. So my point being, these are just three others besides James Tabor. Um, this whole historic Jesus, Dead Sea Scroll movement, scholarly types, they are leading people astray. Um, not everybody, but those that fall in the pit that already may, you know, that follow a certain strange doctrine and a profane doctrine. So what you need to know is the concept of the Judas goat. A Judas goat is a trained goat used in animal herding that associates with sheep or cattle. The goat is used to lead the livestock to slaughter while its own life is spared. And then in Wikipedia regarding the Judas goat, a trained goat, it's trained to associate with sheep or cattle, leading them to a specific destination in stockyards. A Judas goat will lead sheep to slaughter while its own life are spared. Judas goats are also used to lead other animals to specific pens and onto trucks. Okay, so remember the Judas goat. That's what I'm saying is you've got here many sheep that are lost and then you've got among them Judas goats and one Judas goat leads the sheep to the Noahide laws and the other Judas goat leads them to atheism and the other Judas goat maybe leads them to um, being a messianic Jew or, or 
into Torah keeping, but ultimately they all are leading into destruction and perdition. And perdition means destruction or desolation. So the ship, shipwreck, the shipwreck of people's faith. So in John 10, we read the difference between Jesus as the good shepherd and these other shepherds that lead into destruction. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And that he helps the sheep to find pasture, good food. And he says, I'm come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So Jesus leads us into all truth and where we can find good food, good spiritual food. Whereas a Judas goat will lead you to perdition and destruction. Because he is a hireling and not the shepherd of the sheep. So make sure that you follow Christ and his teachings and beware of these Judas goats.